Hi, welcome to First Chapter Friday. My name is Lucy and the book that I am going to be reading the first chapter of today is called From the Desk of Zoe Washington. It's by Janae Marks. Zoe Washington has just turned 12 when this book starts. She lives outside of Boston with her mother and her stepfather and they live in, the, in half of a house that's shared with Zoe's best friend. He lives in the other half with his parents. His name is Trevor. Zoe and Trevor are on the outs when the book starts and we don't know why. So Zoe is just coming home from her 12th birthday party where she has been baking cupcakes in a real bakery. This is Zoe's dream to become a baker and to compete on this kids baking show that she loves and hopefully to win it. So summer has begun and Zoe is hoping that she can convince her parents to let her audition for the baking show. She has an internship at her mom's friend's bakery for the summer. And so her hope is that she'll learn enough and be able to prove to her parents that she's able to try to be on the show. Also, on Zoe's birthday, she receives a letter from her father, Marcus. Zoe has never met Marcus in person. She's never talked to him. All she knows is that he has been in prison for her whole life, for something horrible is what she's told. Although Zoe's grandmother, who takes care of Zoe when her parents are at work, has told her that her father Marcus has always maintained his innocence, and Zoe's grandmother also believes that Marcus is innocent of the crime. So Zoe gets a letter from him, and she doesn't know if pursuing a relationship with her real father is something she should do, or something she wants to do, or something that will distract her from her goal of getting on this baking show. So that is where the book starts. This is chapter one of From the Desk of Zoe Washington. Chapter one. The day I turned 12, I was certain it'd be my favorite birthday yet, but then I got the letter. I just had my dream birthday party at Ari's Cakes. Mom's friend Ariana owned the bakery in Beacon Hill, my favorite neighborhood in all of Boston. It had cute brick buildings and townhouses with cobblestone streets. There was a deli with baskets of fresh fruit for sale outside, a chocolate shop, a coffee shop, and a ton of fancy restaurants. And then there was Ari's Cakes with its pretty pale blue awning and a wooden sign above it with the store's name written in white script. Her front window always had lots of cupcakes on display along with fresh flowers. You could smell the sugar before you walked in. Even though it was pouring rain outside, I felt like the luckiest girl. I'd been in a professional kitchen with my best friends, Jasmine and Maya, as we baked and decorated chocolate fudge cupcakes. When my parents and I got home, dad pulled his rain jacket hood onto his head and rushed inside with the box of leftover cupcakes. Mom, using an umbrella, carried my gift bags. I hurried behind them and on my way in, grabbed the mail from the mailbox next to our front door. While I kicked off my sneakers in our foyer, I flipped through the envelopes, checking to see if my great aunt's birthday card arrived. She usually included money and I was dying to add an egg separator to my baking supplies. There was a catalog and some junk mail from credit card companies and then I spotted a plain white envelope with my name, Zoe Washington and my address handwritten in neat blue print. I glanced at the return address and froze. Massachusetts State Penitentiary was typed on the upper left-hand corner across from a waving American flag stamp. The name Marcus Johnson was written in that same blue handwriting above the prison's name. It was a letter from my convict father, a man I'd never heard from before. I couldn't believe it. Just like that, my birthday didn't matter anymore. The envelope slipped from my fingers, landing on the floor. My dog, Butternut, ran over and started licking it, but I snatched it up and dropped it onto the table next to the front door. Why would Marcus write to me? Why now? I only owned one picture of him, which Grandma had given me, since Mom would never approve. It was one of Mom's pictures that Grandma had saved from when Mom and Marcus were high school sweethearts. I'd hidden the picture between the pages of one of my journals. In it, Marcus was at a Boston Celtics game 
wearing a team sweatshirt and a huge smile. My smile looked like his, which was weird. Someone I'd never met had the exact same smile as me. And his brown skin matched mine. Mom's skin was a little lighter. Now Marcus was sitting in a prison cell, probably wearing an orange jumpsuit. That's how I imagined people in prison. I bet he didn't smile much there. I picked up the envelope and rubbed my thumb across the seal, but all of a sudden my fingers stopped working and I froze in place. I wanted to read it, but I was also terrified of what it might say. He'd committed a terrible crime. What if he'd written something scary? It was only a piece of paper, but the feeling wouldn't go away. I took a deep breath and started to open the envelope again, but then I heard mom come down the stairs. I knew it was mom and not my stepdad, Paul, because she was humming a song, which she did a lot, especially in front of the bathroom mirror when she was putting on makeup. She had a pretty good voice, but she always said it was because of the bathroom acoustics. That was wrong because my stepdad sometimes sang in the shower and the acoustics didn't stop him from sounding like a dying coyote. I quickly tucked the letter into the pocket on the inside of my rain jacket. It wouldn't be a good idea to show mom. I was pretty sure she'd take it away without letting me read it. I hoped she couldn't hear how hard my heart was beating. I put the gift bags in your room, she said. Thanks. Did you have fun today, she asked. Your cupcakes came out so pretty. It was amazing, I told mom. But now I couldn't focus on how amazing it was, not with Marcus's letter taking up so much space in my brain. This today's mail? Mom stared at the foyer table where I'd left the rest of it. Yep, I grabbed it from the mailbox. Thanks. But then her eyebrows scrunched together and her shoulders did what they did when she was stressed. They lifted up toward her ears. She smiled at me, but it was a forced smile, like she wasn't actually happy. She picked up the pile of mail, and as she flipped through it, her shoulders slowly returned to their normal position. I thought Aunt Lillian's card might have come, but I didn't see it. I swallowed hard, thinking of the letter that had come. I wondered if I should tell mom about it, but what if it made her mad or upset? She didn't like to talk about Marcus. Mom smiled at me for real. It'll come. Anyway, there's one more birthday surprise for you. We are going to order Hawaiian-ish pizza for dinner. I forced myself to smile. Hawaiian-ish was the name I'd given my favorite pizza combo, pineapple and pepperoni instead of ham. Since my mom and stepdad thought it was gross, we usually only got those toppings on half a pie. Sounds great, I cleared my throat. I'm gonna go to my room and um, put my gifts away. It was a total lie, but that's not what mom noticed. You're not gonna take your jacket off, she asked. Marcus's envelope was still in my pocket, right over my heart, which was beating fast. I'll take it off in my room. I walked away before mom could say anything else. What could Marcus have to say to me? I had to know. And that is the end of chapter one. So if you wanna know what the letter to Zoe that her dad wrote her says, you'll have to read more. And I recommend that you do because this is a really great book. It's a story about learning to believe in someone despite what you've been told about them. It's a story about learning to believe in yourself and to listen to friends and family. And it is also a story about baking, which is really fun because you get to read about Zoe creating her own recipes. So if you are interested in baking at all, I also recommend that you read From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. Thanks.